From labor disputes to new products rolling off the line, there have been a lot of ups and downs in the first 50 years of GM Lordstown. We start by taking a look back at how an empty field was transformed into an assembly line that would produce 15 million vehicles. General Motors has bought up the 1,100-acre farm right where Ellsworth Bailey Road crosses the Ohio Turnpike. It all started in 1964. That's when General Motors bought acres of cornfield and broke ground on a brand new production facility in Lordstown. Two years later, those cornfields had been transformed into a state-of-the-art assembly line. The first Impala rolled off the line on April 28, 1966. Over the next few years, General Motors added a new stamping plant and a van production line at Lordstown. There were labor disputes in those early years. In fact, we had 17 strikes. Three of them were authorized strikes. <laughs> the biggest was a 1972 strike over the speed of the assembly line. That walkout lasted 22 days. The 1970s brought the Chevy Vega to Lordstown, which would become known as the worst car built here. General Motors was trying to compete with small cars like the Volkswagen Beetle. The new model was named Car of the Year by Motor Trend magazine in 1971. But the Vega had problems with its engineering, safety, and durability. Its run ended in 1977. In 1981, when GM unveiled the Chevrolet Cavalier. That car and its Pontiac counterpart, the Sunbird, helped General Motors gain momentum with buyers looking for a small entry-level car. This is like a big bombshell that dropped on us today, and we don't know where we're going to go. The popularity of minivans led to the end of a full-size van production at the plant in the early 90s. By the mid-1990s, production costs were rising. General Motors claimed it was having a hard time making money on the Cavalier and at one point told plant manager Herman Moss they were going to close Lordstown. We're going to finish the Cavalier out until uh, the 2000 model and then we're going to shut the plant down. That was a turning point. Thanks. Teamwork has been the key to our success. And the UAW and management worked together to turn things around. There was even a public campaign called Bring It Home Lordstown to land the next generation small car. The work paid off, and in 2004, the first Chevrolet Cobalt rolled off the line. GM launched the cruise in 2010, and today the plant is back to three shifts and employs about 4,700 people. In total, workers at Lordstown have built more than 15 million vehicles in the past 50 years.